Well, good evening and welcome everyone. Before we begin the proceedings of our board meeting, I would like to highlight our safety protocols and expectations this evening. Due to CDC guidance placing Kent County in the substantial risk category for transmission of the COVID-19 Delta variant, we are requiring masks indoors for anyone on the grounds of GRPS property, for all students, staff, and visitors, regardless of vaccination status. If you need a mask, these are available at the entrances. Public comment cards and meeting agendas are located on the tables within the board chambers at both entrances. Once you fill out a comment card, please submit this in the drop box next to the comment <clears throat> cards. Our board assistant will collect those cards and when I call for public comment, uh, she'll deliver them to our board secretary, Ms. Lewis, will then call you forward. I did just wanna draw your attention to um, an update on our cards as well. Mm -hmm. If you are a GRPS scholar, that means student, uh, we just ask that you check that box because we'll invite you forward um, uh, at the agenda item time. We just want to make sure that we honor our students' time. Uh, so if you are a student that wishes to give public comment, just make sure you check that box. Um, so I will call on each individual one at a time to address the board at the presentation table. So on behalf of our superintendent, Dr. Ladrian Roby, and the Board of Education, thank you so much for being here in attendance with us. With that, I will call this meeting of the Grand Rapids Public Schools Board of Education to order. Today is Monday, October 18. Will you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Lewis, will you please call the roll? Ms. Grant, present. Ms. Lewis is here. Reverend Matias? Present. Mr. Ross? Present. Mrs. Williams? Present. Dr. Baker? Here. Ms. Davis is excused. Dr. Flores? Present. President Shackey? I'm here. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. May I please have a motion for approval of our agenda? So moved. Support. For all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right, we will move forward to our celebrations and I'll hand it over to Dr. Roby. Good evening. We have a lot of celebrations this evening and we're going to begin with our student scholars who participated in the Smart Art competition. If I can have Mr. Eric Carmson and Ms. Maggie Malone to come forward and introduce our scholars and artists. Good evening, President Schottke, Dr. Roby. Um, we are excited to be able to recognize our 2021 Smart Art Top 10. And with that, I will uh, turn it over to our fantastic fine arts director, Maggie Malone. Thank you, Mr. Harpson. Um, good evening, President Shockey, Dr. Roby, and members of the board. We're super excited to have some amazing talent with us today. Um, we have some awesome students who are here um, to celebrate. We also have a couple of our long-standing GRPS partners that we're excited. And if I could have our uh, partner representatives, please join me up here. That would be great. Um, Smart Art stands for Students Making Art with a Renewable Theme. And this is a partnership that we developed in 2013, and we've had the pleasure of working with um, two amazing organizations that have been longtime supporters of GRPS and our students. And Students Making Art with a Renewable Theme is an art competition that was started to celebrate our students' artistic talent as well as supporting the renewable and sustainable theme that is one of the tenants of our, one of our partners, Consumers Energy, who is here. And so this uh, particular partnership, the students present work, it's restricted to high school students. It goes through two rounds of judging. The first round is internal and we narrow it down to 20. Then we bring in professionals from our community who represent our local universities that have strong art programs like Kendall College of Art and Design, Grand Valley State University, and Grand Rapids Community College. And they actually place the top 20 and then we get our places. And there are some amazing prizes that go along with this. And, um, and also the connection to art prize is strong. So I'd like to recognize um, Craig 
Sierra, who is the executive director for Art Prize, and he'll add a little bit about our connection with them. Yeah, thank you very much for having me tonight. I, I truly appreciate it. Um, it is with great pleasure that we are able to host the Smart Art students uh, for Art Prize each and every year. Uh, looking back in 2009 would have been, we're now in a complete generation shift. Uh, so those students who were first in first grade are now in you know, the, the, the high school age and really experiencing some really cool um, and uh, unique uh, opportunities for, for their smart art and their education with GRPS. So we're thrilled with the continued partnership and can't wait to take it another uh, 10 or 11 years uh, and beyond. So very, very excited about this. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Craig. Um, and then we also could not do this without our um, support of Consumers Energy. And so with that, I'd like to recognize uh, Josh, who is the West Michigan media spokesperson with Consumers Energy. Thanks, Maggie. Uh, on behalf of Consumers Energy, we just want to express how grateful we are for Grand Rapids Public Schools, um, all of the staff, especially Maggie, who helped make this uh, contest possible each year, as well as our partnership with Art Prize. We're really grateful. There are so many special students who participate in this contest each year, and Consumers Energy, we're, we're proud to be uh, able to support this contest. Uh, the first place winner received a $1,000 scholarship this year, as well as a new MacBook. Our hope by sponsoring this competition is that allows those students um, with those prizes to continue to pursue this passion. Um, art's really important, and at the same time, as Maggie mentioned, this is a company, Consumers Energy, we're uh, looking to build a more sustainable future for this generation of students and for all generations to come. And by them pursuing art projects with a, path, with a uh, renewable energy theme, um, they're able to help learn a little bit more about what they can do in order to help build a cleaner and uh, more sustainable planet for everyone. So again, thank you uh, so much for Grand Rapids Public Schools for having us here today. Thank you, Josh. Um, and if you look around the auditorium, you'll see the students work around the room. And then this year, for the first time, uh, we had a mini banner uh, that's in the back of the room, so you can see the students work there. If you were driving downtown, if you noticed on the consumer uh, substation across from the Bob, there was a massive, huge banner that actually took up almost the entire side of a building with these amazing students' work. Uh, so if you hadn't had the opportunity, I'm not sure if it's still up, but don't worry, we have a picture coming up for you, <laughs> just in case you missed it. All right, so in this this um, competition, we have a People's Choice Award, just like they do in Art Prize. So this was actually done by people voting. Um, so congratulations to our People's Choice winner, um, Theo Stella Williams, who is a student at CA Frost, and their art teacher is here today, Ms. Lazare. So congratulations to Theo. <laughs> and then, the moment you've all been waiting for, ba, 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 uh, the top 10. So in 10th place, again, Theo Stella Williams from CA Frost. Congratulations. <laughs> and next we have Silas Williams, who is with us here today from City Middle High. <laughs> and Silas is a junior at City. Awesome, and then next we have Gavin Scalian from CA Frost Middle High. <laughs> Congratulations, and next we have Sarah Rabinette from Sydney. <laughs> and Sarah is now a junior at City Middle High. And we have Sharon Gonzalez from City Middle High. And Manuel Gomez Diaz. And Manuel is a junior at Innovation Central. And next we have Ruby Taylor from CA Frost. And Jade West from City Middle High. And Jade is a sophomore at City Middle High. 
And we have Lily Tuttle from CA Frost. And I don't know if you can tell, but this one is actually painted bottle caps. Like the amount of time that took some of these pieces, I mean, they're all amazing. But when you look closely, wow, the time and the talent that this took. And then our first place winner, Nevaeh Martin from City or CA Frost. And again, if you get the opportunity to look at the work that's posted as well as in the back, um, just amazing talent that we have in GRPS. And our thanks to our amazing students, their supportive family, to our awesome art teachers, our principals, and our amazing Board of Education and Superintendent for supporting and keeping these programs viable for all of our students and also our amazing partners. So thank you to everybody. And students, we're so proud of you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. And congratulations again, once again, to our student scholars. We are very proud of you to have a citywide display. That is phenomenal. Next, I'm going to invite up Ms. Malika Brown um, to, and Mr. Eric Harmson to talk about Leadership Grand Rapids. Good evening again, President Shockey and Dr. Roby and distinguished members of the board. Each year, the Grand Rapids Chamber picks 40 leaders to be part of the Leadership Grand Rapids cohort. The purpose of Leadership GR is to create a community of uncommon greatness in the leaders that are accepted into the program. Participants include a cross-section of business, education, and nonprofit leaders. Each year, a class of leaders is accepted into the program to take part in an intensive community and professional leadership program Following the principles of community connections, leadership skills, diversity, and systems thinking. Through monthly deep dives into key community issues and topics, participants have a chance to deepen their understanding of our community and develop a broad and inclusive mindset needed for community stewardship. Leadership GR leaders are motivated and interested in learning self-discovery, community engagement, networking, and how to use this experience to build on their community trusteeship. Tonight, it is my pleasure to recognize and celebrate Malika Brown, our Director of Equity and Inclusion, as one of the 40 members of the Leadership Grand Rapids 2021-22 cohort. Malika has worked for the Grand Rapids Public Schools for 25 years. I wasn't sure I should put 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> we build enough trust. All right. She works tirelessly to improve the education and life outcomes of GRPS scholars. In her previous roles as a teacher, instructional coach, curriculum supervisor, and director of professional learning, she maintained a focus on the most important part of our nation's future, its children. She continues this focus as a director of equity and inclusion for GRPS. She works with district leaders, staff, students, community partners, and families. She is an eager student of diversity, equity, inclusion, and culture as they relate to student achievement and success, and has facilitated professional learning opportunities in these areas for a variety of role groups. She is currently leading our vision and system-wide implementation plan for equity and inclusion. She received a Bachelor of Science in Education from Louisiana State University, Master of Arts in Education from Mary Grove College, an Educational Specialist degree from Grand Valley State University. Malika's role as an educator and advocate for students has afforded her many opportunities to learn, grow, and share. Malika has a wonderful opportunity to work alongside GVSU, Western Michigan University, and Institute for Learning, and uh, facilitate learning opportunities in the areas of mathematics and teaching and learning. She is a member of the Alpha, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, Inc., the advisory board for Grand Valley State University's Regional Math and Science Center, and a newly appointed member of the board of directors for Safe Haven Ministries. Malika is a proud lifelong educator, learner, student advocate, However, her most important role are that of wife to a dynamo of a husband, Eric, and a mother of three magnificent children, Theron, Amari, and Gabe. Please join me within 
to celebrate and recognize Malika Brown in being selected for this prestigious program and for all the tireless work she puts in for our scholars. Thank you. I think I bring Eric with me everywhere. So you can do that for me. Um, I've said many times before that um, I believe the schoolhouse um, and those it serves are the centerpiece of our community. Um, and that means that we're very much a part of um, and are impacted by the complex uh, issues that are faced by our city. Um, so um, when I was approached to apply for this, um, it was a no-brainer. I jumped at it um, to be um, just a part of uh, a group of um, really awesome people um, that I've had a chance to meet um, so far like twice, um, once over a long weekend. But just the opportunity to um, bring the education perspective into the room, but also to learn from the perspective of the other industries that are represented there. Um, and so I um, am honored um, and humbled by the opportunity um, to represent our district. Um, but even more, I am thankful for our um, superintendent and the supervisor and colleagues who are supporting me in this. So thank you so much. Congratulations. Well deserved. Congratulations again, Ms. Brown. Our next celebration is the Jean Hamilton Cope Teacher of the Year Award. And this is an exciting time as we get to recognize our teacher staff. And so Dr. Gorman, Mr. Helmholtz, and the, our executive director from the Grand Rapids Foundation are going to come forward and give you some information about our three honorees. I'll get out of my seat in just a minute there if you want to give me a second. So uh, Dr. Roby, President Shockey, members of the board, it's a great pleasure and honor to be here tonight as we have our inaugural Gene Hamilton Cope Teacher of the Year Awards. Uh, with me here tonight is Becky Knack, the Executive Director of the Grand Rapids Public Schools Foundation. The interim, she always likes me to emphasize, <laughs> very interim. Dr. Gorman, of course, uh, Lori Gran and her husband Mark, and uh, Dave Cope is here as well, the, her, Lori's brother. And, um, you know, I'm gonna, just going to turn it over to Becky. This is something that's fortuitously just kind of came together when, when Lori and her brother reached out with an interest in sponsoring this Teacher of the Year Award. And it's been a minute for us to finally get this up and running and align it with the Michigan Teacher of the Year. And so I'm going to first turn it over to Becky, and then she'll turn it over to... Um, uh, to Lori and then to Dr. Gorman, and we'll do the awards. Thanks, John. Goodness. Don't articulate real well through a mask. <laughs> Forgive me for that. Um, I'm really honored to represent the Grand Rapids Foundation this year, and especially happy that we're presenting the very first Best Teacher Award to these three of Grand Rapids Public Schools' amazing teaching staff. There's never been in recent memory a time so difficult for teachers and to be able to award these three teachers who are the epitome of what great teaching is all about is a privilege indeed. Last year I had to do some teaching remotely in high school. It was a nightmare. I think it's about the worst thing you can ever do and I honor any teacher who went through that for over a year. Clearly the thanks goes to Laurie Grand and Mark, her husband who gave us the money and now live in Southern California. However, Laurie's mother, Jean Hamilton, uh, Cope taught kindergarten at Huff School for 29 years, and the award is in her honor. Laurie has wonderful memories of a house full of paper cutouts, oodles of crayons and scissors, the usual clutter of kindergarten projects. Work her single mother shared with her four children. They loved it. Laurie believed a truly great way to honor her mother's memory would be to give an endowment which would honor the best of the best in Grand Rapids Public School teaching year after year. Let me introduce Lori and her husband, Mark. Lori's over here to my right, just past Ron, and her husband, Mark. And David Cope, her brother, right back here. So my Laurie. turn? Your turn. My turn, okay. Just trying to make sure. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. I'm Lori Cope Grand. I grew up here in uh, Grand Rapids. I live in Southern California now, but Mark and I flew here just to be here tonight with you and are uh, just thrilled to be here. Uh, so just a, uh, just a couple of words without getting into too much pontification. I've been, you know, of course, going over this in my mind, like what are the best things to say and to keep it brief and all that. But um, 
you know, growing up as the daughter of a teacher is a unique experience, and especially a single mother when the whole world kind of revolves around the four children in our case and my mom. And she started teaching when she was 39 years old uh, after having stayed at home and been a wife and uh, a married mother, uh, having four kids. And our family broke up when, um, in like late 50s, and she had to go to work. I mean, that was really why. And thank goodness she had a degree from Go Blue, University <laughs> of Michigan, thank goodness, and was able to, she had never taught though. Uh, but her father had been superintendent of schools in Bay City, so it was kind of in her blood. And early childhood education was in her blood and uh, stayed in her blood until the end when she passed away at 2000, in 2008. So just a couple of little things. One is, I just I made some pictures of, this is her bell. I was going to schlep it here, um, but it's really big. It's like this tall, it's heavy, but it's engraved with Huff School, which is where she taught. And as you may know or not, Huff School was on Ball Avenue. Doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately. My friend Steve Horowitz in the back tells me that it's now condominiums. <laughs> so what else is new in this world? But anyway, that's her bell. So that's what this bell um, motif is all about. This is a picture of my mother, Jean Cope, mm -hmm. at age 39 in 1960. <laughs> <laughs> nice. uh, this was her first year teaching. And uh, she looks so slender and youthful because she was. Um, but that's what teacher pictures looked like back then. And then quickly, this is a picture which you can't see, but it's really a treasure, I think, which is um, my mom, which is she's standing here in her classroom at Huff. Um, you can't see it either, but it's a really cool picture. Um, and she has a shirtwaist dress on. So this is like 1964, I'm guessing. And um, her classroom was just like most, I think, elementary school teachers, her classroom was just always full of color and sound and noise. And she played the piano constantly and um, you know, allowed confusion and kind of cacophony in the room. And I think that's one thing that made her a fabulous teacher was she was comfortable with that, which drove me crazy. I am not a teacher. I got into corporate training and development. That was my career. I'm also a psychotherapist. I'm retired now. Um, but I, I thought I would be a teacher, but I just don't have that thing, you know, like I think you have to have that thing if you're going to do it. So this is the K for kindergarten outside her classroom at Huff. I own this. It's in my house. It's very precious. But one of the things that I love about it is seeing her handwriting and her printing on it. She made this and painted it and wrote her own name on it. So that's very precious to me. And then just two more. Um, here's a picture of my mom in her classroom, sitting in her rocking chair. Toward the end of her career, I'm thinking, so maybe 70s or 80s, mm -hmm. um, holding up a book. And um, you can't see. <laughs> um, she just, she loved being a teacher. So that's, that's one reason for this. And then finally, I came across her, um, there was a sheet of paper that had, was the announcement of her retirement gathering at Huff School in uh, June, May or June of uh, 1986. So she taught 26 full years, two classes, morning and afternoon, every single one of those years. And if you average out her class size to, I'm guessing, 25, although I do remember a couple years where she had two classes of 37, if, you know, keeping track of all those five-year-olds and their families. And we, all, we knew all their names in our, in our family, and we helped her cut things out. And, and our house was, I was telling Becky earlier today, our house was like a warehouse um, annex or something for her classroom at Huff. Um, but I came so I came across this announcement, and it has a little caboose on the bottom. She drew this. She always liked to draw little things. She was a good artist. And she was just fascinated by the metaphor of the train and the caboose, and that was just in, in red, the color red. So that just gives you a little sense of who she is. And then one last thing, it's like, why did I decide to do this? Um, why did Mark and I decide together, my husband, uh, to provide the money for this endowment to enable this thing to happen in the schools? Um, it's really a matter of, of course, I'm very proud of her. I'm proud to be her daughter. Uh, it's important to me to live up to her values. And so that's one thing. But also, I just really believe in public education. Um, as Becky, did you mention the thing about Forest Hills? I didn't. Oh, OK. Well, <laughs> we, we lived out in Cascade, so I 
don't blame me, but we went to Forest Hill <laughs> schools. That's just where we happened to live. But you know, we just believed um, strongly in, in public education. Uh, when my husband Mark worked for Sears for eight years down in the Chicago area, our daughter went to Barrington Public Schools, and you know, we're just thrilled to be able to have her be in a public school system. And the assistance she was provided when she needed it was just life changing. So I just really think that teachers save lives, change lives. I mean, it's just astonishing. And people, some people, you hear people say, oh, but you have summers off and you go home at three in the afternoon. My mother never drove into our driveway before 6.30 at night, never. And if she did, there was something wrong. So, um, so really, it just to me, it comes down to legacy. And if you were fortunate enough to see the play Hamilton or see the movie of the play Hamilton on television, there's a line that kind of resonates with me from that play by Lin-Manuel Miranda, which is, what is a legacy? A legacy is planting seeds in a garden that you'll never see grow. And that's really true. And so that's kind of for me and Mark, that's what this is about. So thank you for letting us be part of this and congratulations to the people who are, will receive the first awards. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Okay, good evening, President Shockey. Uh, distinguished members of our Board of Education and Dr. Roby, I'm going to walk through the process, the criteria, the nominees, the winners, and then there'll be an opportunity for a photo op, okay? So first and foremost, the process. GRPS staff members nominated teachers within the district and a committee used an extensive rating system to determine winners based on the Michigan Teacher of the Year criteria. That committee included representatives from cabinet, central office staff, building-based administration, student representatives to the Board of Education, a GREA president, GRPSF executive director, and designee. I'd like to uh, recognize the individuals who supported these efforts from the committee. Uh, Ms. Mary Bowens, will you please stand? Thank you, Mary. Sorry to catch you <laughs> off guard. <laughs> Mr. Rodney Lewis. I saw Rodney. Mr. Rodney Lewis. Ms. Malika Brown. Okay, thank you. Dr. Carl Nelson. Thank you, Dr. Nelson. Principal from Yada Hill Hall. <laughs> Becky Neck. Ruth Postumas. Very own Luca Chisholm. Jacqueline Cruz Calderon. And I. We were the ones who signed on the committee. The criteria included knowledge and use of effective instructional methods, passion for teaching and student learning, leadership inside and outside of the classroom, collaboration with colleagues, students, and families, and advocacy for students. There were 60 submissions, and many individuals were nominated multiple times. So here is the moment you have all been waiting for. I am going to announce the pre-K-5 winner at this time. And so at this time, Jill Nimadomsky, will you please stand? She is our pre-K-5 winner. <laughs> Jill, please, please stay standing for just a, a few more moments, if you don't mind. She is from Buchanan Elementary. She's described in nomination materials as an amazing and friendly teacher who continually goes above and beyond to make sure her class is well run and respectful to everyone. Several nominators noted that currently the school is missing a teacher for the other second grade classroom. But Jill is preparing lessons for that class that substitute teachers, that substitute teachers can deliver so that those students can keep pace with her students. Wrote one colleague, she inspires kids to be their best and try their hardest, even when it seems impossible. She is an amazing colleague, friend, and teacher. Another said that she has been part of our school instructional leadership team for several years. She ensures that the best interest of students is always the focus for any decisions made in the building. She searches out resources for improving instruction and works hard to implement best practices across all content areas. She is always willing to collaborate with others, both within and across grade levels. Please once again congratulate Jill, Jill Niewandowski.
next up, we are going to recognize our sixth through eighth grade winner from Grand Rapids University Preparatory Academy, Ms. Sherry Cry. Mr. Sherry Cry, please stand. <laughs> Cry had a similar set of superlatives in her nomination materials with, with one person writing that Cry's science classroom is like Mrs. Frizzle from the Magic School Bus <laughs> taking her students on adventures and opening their eyes to the world of science and possibilities. Another colleague simply said she is known around school for her positive attitude and her engaging classroom. And yet another noted that during the pandemic, Cry and one of her team members regularly reached out to and connected with their students' families in a time where families felt isolated and alone, even creating thinking about you bags. They added, when one of our students lost their mother, she led the charge to make sure the student and family felt supported with resources. This is not the only time she has gone above and beyond for our families. And Cry's contributions to the lives of her students outside the classroom also received glowing praise, including her coaching of cross country and track, her work with Girls on the Run, and connections to the Van Andel Education Institute, and many more. Please congratulate with me once again, this is Sherry Cry. <laughs> Lastly, we would like to celebrate our nine through 12 winner, Ms. Nicole Durso. Ms. Nicole Durso from Union High School. <laughs> Durso, also a science teacher, was lauded for her leadership of the department at Union and commended as a person who truly epitomizes the definition of a lifelong learner, as well as someone who is well respected by her colleagues. She was also a teacher representative on the GRPS equity and inclusion team and has helped to organically grow an anti-bias and anti-racism team at Union High School with a grant from the Grand Rapids Community Foundation. One nominator wrote, she is a team player who can always be counted on. Most importantly, Ms. Durso is invested in our students and their futures. She cares deeply for our students and is willing to invest time in building relationships, implementing instructional strategies, and tracking down necessary resources for their success. Another said, in all honesty, I do not know that I have come across a more talented, genuine teacher than Ms. Nicole Durso. She is someone that I truly wish I had the opportunity to teach alongside and plan with, as I know that she motivates me to do better. Ladies and gentlemen, please congratulate Ms. Nicole. At this time, would our winners uh, please come forward uh, with your family members? We'd like to take a photo. Oh. John is going to help coordinate uh, the rest of this because that's what he does best, right? <laughs> Oh, oh, good. Okay. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. So I would like to have you be up there as well. Yeah, and you are going to be Before we take the picture, you'll notice that there are three large checks coming the, our teacher's way. These are for $1,000 that they can spend on whatever they like. So uh, thank you to the family for providing this. There's also a, uh, a, a plaque and it has sorry, the, I'm oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's also a plaque that has a bell that was referenced before. And there will also be a plaque that stays at Franklin campus forever as we acknowledge teachers forever. All right. So uh, thank you. Let's take some pictures. Jill, why don't we start with you? You want to come in the middle here? Um, we're going to have your check here. Your right in the middle there. Board members, please have to come. Let's hold on to this. Thank you. 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 <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, there's your cue. I'm smiling. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Miss Sherry, would you mind stepping in here? 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you for everything. Make sure you sign the bag. Yep. Just squeeze in a little bit more here. Can we look at Renee, please? Excellent. All right, cool. This one, this one. Just, oh, not quite. Got one, one more, one more. We're ready to now with all three gentlemen. Oh, I bet. I bet they do. Yeah, that is so neat. <laughs> um, I hear you, but <laughs> uh, Connections. Yeah, I just don't think we even thought about it. Thank you. 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 All right, I think a few of us would like to say just a few words of gratitude before you leave us. So just personally, what a joy it is to uh, be among you and to express uh, our gratitude for what you do in our city, <laughs> for our children, uh, and in your schools. I know everyone's, yeah, it's all right. 
<laughs> we're, we're doing our best. Watch the tape. We're really grateful. <laughs> if any other board members want to say anything, please <laughs> chime in. All right, very good. <laughs> so we will move forward with our agenda. Um, next, we will have our reports from our student representatives. And so we'll start with Ms. Cruz Calderon. Good evening. Yeah, so uh, we have a meeting plan for next Wednesday. I believe this is 27th. So we should have our high school graduation site settled by then um, so that we can report to you guys back for the next board meeting. Um, me, uh, <laughs> Luca, and I uh, also help part, uh, with the Teacher of the Year Award, so we're glad that we had some participation in that so that students' voices can also be heard because that's also very important so that not only is it adults, but that things can be seen from the students' perspective as well. Thank you. Great. All right. Thank you very much. Mr. Chisholm. Um, over the uh, last several weeks and in the coming days, um, seniors uh, at GRPS are being given the opportunity to retake the SAT, uh, which is always important. Uh, we are essentially getting an additional opportunity to, to take the SAT. Um, from our opportunity we had last winter, I believe. Uh, so this last week, this last Wednesday, uh, seniors at City were given the opportunity to retake it, uh, in which uh, most of our grade participated in. Uh, so that is a, a good thing, of course. Um, Last time I spoke here, uh, we were kicking off our homecoming celebration week at City, which went uh, very well. Uh, kids had a lot of fun, just got to enjoy themselves in you know, the midst of a pretty uh, chaotic year so far. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, our first uh, marking period is coming to an end this Friday. So um, both the uh, staff and student body are working pretty tirelessly to um, uh, you know, finalize grades by uh, the end of our first quarter here. So uh, yeah. Thank you so much for your report. Okay, we'll move forward to public comment for board agenda items. Ms. Anderson, do we have any additional? Very good, all right. So the ones I have here are for non-agenda, so we'll move forward to our reports. The first is our secretary's report. Ms. Lewis. Yes, the policy committee will be meeting Wednesday, this Wednesday, October 20th at 5 p.m. in the Franklin Campus Administration Building Auditorium. The Finance Committee will be meeting on Monday, October the 25th at 5.30 in the Franklin Campus Administration Building Auditorium. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. We have just one committee chair update this evening and I'll give that report. This is for the City Board Liaison Committee. Uh, the City Board Liaison Committee is a joint committee between the Board of Education and the City of Grand Rapids. So uh, myself and the mayor co-chair that committee and we have uh, two representatives, two from the commission and two from the board who participate in that work. Uh, so from the Board of Ed side, uh, we informed and updated the city on our strategic planning process, including the many input sessions that are being held around the community. Uh, we talked about uh, ESSER funds and our updates for how um, spending will happen, which we'll hear more about this evening. We also updated them on uh, bond projects and the progress of uh, the bond monies we've spent over the last couple of years and, and what we are planning on in the oncoming months and year. Um, from the city side, they uh, let us know that they have set aside $5 million in their affordable housing fund. Um, additionally, they are going through the participatory budgeting process. So they uh, gave us some updates on community involvement in that process and just let us know that they're learning a lot and we are watching uh, to see how that goes for the community at large. Um, they also told us about uh, two resolutions that they recently passed one on racism, uh, calling it a public health crisis. And also um, in the spirit of our smart art today, they told us about a recent resolution that they passed to uh, reduce carbon emissions by 85% by the year 2030 in the city and to be a net zero city by 2040. And then uh, we celebrated with them as they have hired on their uh, executive director for the um, our community's children office, uh, Ms. Shannon Harris, who's been there for quite some time and served as the interim director, has been um, uh, promoted to and accepted the role of executive director. So we're delighted to continue the really important work uh, of that office and work with Ms. Harris. Um, any, anything I missed, colleagues that were there, Mr. Ross or Ms. Grant? Okay, very good. 
Uh, we'll move on to our superintendent's reports. Dr. Good Irby. Good evening, everyone. We are going to have a series of reports um, beginning with our strategic planning update with Mr. Helmholt, which he will also stay present for the GRPS Foundation updates, and then lights out after school with Ms. Rosie Holmes and Mr. L Mel Atkins II. And then finally, our ESSER reports, um, as we promised once a month or so, we're doing reports related to our ESSER dollars, how money is being spent, including timelines, as well as outcomes that we expect to get from that information. So I'll just let let us roll. All right. Uh, so we've had a busy couple of weeks. There's been a significant amount of engagement, uh, both that was organized by the district, by also also with our, our partners from Urban Core Collective, funded by the Grand Rapids Community Foundation. Uh, just last week, we had on the, the October 12th, the uh, in-person Southwest Middle High School. We had on Thursday, the 14th, we had our virtual session, which had the largest turnout of all so far. We're averaging a couple dozen per, but they've been very diverse, very robust discussions. Uh, we also, on the 14th, uh, I helped to uh, lead a student group discussion with Westwood Middle Schoolers, which is one of the best things I've done all year. It was uh, <laughs> fabulous very insightful young people and we just need to as we look at your strategic plan and uplifting student voice um, that's something that was very evident in that engagement session that evening we also had uh, john ball community association and southwest area neighbors hosted a session the hispanic center hosted two sessions that day coming up um, this week we have martha greenway back in town she'll be here on the 20th and the 21st We've arranged for focus group sessions with 30 individual high school students per high school so that every one of the high schools will have 30 students. They were provided with the demographic makeup of the district as well as our, our at-risk population, special ed, special ed English learners. So we're looking to make sure that this is representative of the student body that we, we serve. Uh, we also have the special education A team on October 20th in the evening and then um, there's also a community focus group with other community nonprofit partners. And then Thursday is on October 21st, the Union High School in-person staff and community input sessions. Times are 4.30 to 6 for staff, uh, 6.30 to 8 for community, which can also include staff members, students, parents, anyone that's it's, it's free and open to the public. And then we also added our um, Ottawa Hills the following week, Tuesday, October 26th, uh, we have just a community input session from 6.30 to 8. And then that same week, we have Boys and Girls Club at the Seedman and the Style Centers uh, with students again, so student-led focus groups. And uh, by this Wednesday, we'll be launching essentially a virtual version uh, of a survey that will be the same questions that the facilitators are asking at each of these units. So the concept here is, again, to gather the input about the strategic plan framework so then based on that input, we would finalize that and then bring that to you all on November 8th for your vote. That's all I have on strategic planning. On the foundation, we had a great celebration tonight. That was just felt great to kind of kick off that Teacher of the Year Award, something we're looking to do, staff appreciation, other opportunities. Uh, we'll be kicking something off tomorrow. I'm not going to keep it a secret, but let's just say the foundation made a very generous contribution to allow us to begin doing more staff appreciation opportunities, and we're going to continue to do that throughout the year. And uh, the other part is that they are narrowing down the search for the executive director. You know, they're without an executive director. Becky Knack uh, can't be done with her interim <laughs> executive director anytime so soon enough, as she'd say. Uh, but we are now into second round interviews, and we're hoping that by the end of October, really more of middle of November, we'll have a final selection. And that's all I have. Are there any questions? Good evening, Dr. Roby, President Shockey, members of the board. I'd like to introduce our Director of Extended Learning, Rosie Holmes, to the table to talk about our annual Lights On event. Good evening. Grand Rapids Public Schools and the Office of Extended Learning are proud to join communities across America celebrating Lights On After School on Thursday, October 28th. There is a lot to celebrate. After school programs keep kids safe, inspire them to learn and grow, and give parents peace of mind. Tuesday, October 26th, 
Grand Rapids Mayor, the Honorable Rosin Bliss, will present a Lights On proclamation. A selected Grand Rapids Public School loop parent and student will also speak at the commissioner's meeting on the importance and benefits of Grand Rapids Public Schools after school programs. Each loop site will participate in the nationwide celebration, showcasing various activities such as STEM, poetry, songs about healthy eating, student cooking lessons, uh, trivia games, and more. This year's host site is Southwest Community Campus, which is managed by United Methodist Community House. This event will be from 4 o'clock to 5.30 p.m. A copy of the flyer is provided in your board packet. Let's shine a light on our community's program and show how after school is stepping up to the plate to help kids learn, explore, and rebound from COVID-19. Join us in the celebration. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for the Lights on After School program or Ms. Holmes or Mr. Atkins? No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wrong button there. Good evening, Madam President, Dr. Roby, Superintendent, and distinguished members of the board. It gives me an honor and pleasure to be able to spend a little time with you to share uh, with you our um, in report and intended use of the ESSER funds. And, um, to kind of tee it up, in athletics and our departments, it's no different from any other department where uh, our biggest expenses and people. Um, having a staff to be able to run programs and be there for the kids. And then, you know, behind that is transportation, trying to get kids to where they need to be and when they need to be there, those sort of things. And then kind of tearing down on that list would be equipment, and uniforms, and those sort of things. And so um, we don't often get an opportunity to um, get the equipment and uniforms on a regular basis as we would like. And so an average year, we kind of have to pick and choose what we're going to replenish or replace or repair based on, you know, what our general annual budget and funding is. And so, you know, the ESSER gives us an opportunity to kind of rectify some of that. And, um, and, and then we also had um, ESSER work sessions where we had uh, parents and students come in and, and share with us some of the thoughts and ideas that they had behind um, use of uh, the support dollars there. And um, some of the things that jump out in my mind from those work sessions was, can we make sure the team uniforms all match? You know, people notice those types of things. Um, can we consider some alternate um, measures of, or means of transportation for smaller groups, some of the smaller teams? Uh, can we consider some improvements beyond just the basketball court? So everybody knows that the high schools had their gyms renovated. And so what about the other sports in there? And then can we do some exploration around esports? You know, some, uh, some of the things that are uh, currently trending there. And so taking some of that feedback into um, work sessions and some of the planning, and uh, we want to kind of give you a balcony view of uh, what our intended use is. And while we know um, ESSER won't cure everything, uh, cure all the ills and all uh, the things that we need, we, we do, but we do think it will do its intended purpose, which is provide a little bit of relief for the last 18 months some, for some of the challenging situations that we have found ourselves in as a result of the C word. And so coming out of that, I just want to kind of go through and hopefully I push the right buttons here, Craig. If, if not, Craig's going to help me out there. So here's a, a page that kind of gives a, um, a summary, some focus areas, some summary amounts, some timelines, and some target outcomes. So we're going to look at these areas, capital improvements, uh, equipment, and program operation for high schools, uh, facilities, middle school support, professional development, technology, transportation, and Title IX there. So with those capital improvements, so um, the high schools, both high schools, Ottawa and Union, are embarking upon capital campaigns to improve some of their facilities where the bond dollars could not touch. So bond dollars could do not, not do everything. So uh, embarking upon some fundraising. And so we have a related slide that will break down some more details for you there. Uh, equipment and program operations for high schools. So to replenish and replace and repair the uniforms and equipment, uh, along with some access and rental fees that we do for some of the sports there. Facilities, addressing some of the emerging safety concerns, and we'll talk a little more about that. 
uh, try to rectify some things before they get worse. Uh, middle school support. So we're working collaboratively with the Grand Rapids Public Schools Foundation. Uh, and like I said, you know, the, the years in terms of um, what funds could be raised or could not be raised, you know, but to make sure those programs can continue to operate as we kind of come out of that cycle. Professional development, you know, trying to get our staff in the presence and expertise of others beyond our own and what that looks like. Some technology, again, um, some of our high school students and the eligibility center, they've been doing some things uh, that we want to make that process accessible and easy for them, along with, like I said, the exploration of uh, eSports and what that could bring. Transportation, what are some of the ideas around some alternate uh, methods for that? And Title IX. So, you know, Title IX is on the forefront of a lot of minds the last past few years. And so how do we educate our staff and students and our community about uh, Title IX and law and what it means there? So those target capital um, campaigns. So Ottawa and Union both are embarking upon campaigns uh, to raise additional funds to improve some areas. Uh, like I said, like the bond dollars it did not touch. And so um, Ottawa currently is in the, their total numbers in development. Um, and so their total need hasn't been determined yet. But we do want to apply uh, $500,000 towards that effort there. And here are some of the areas that uh, we want touched or a plan on touching. And the same for both high schools, but the level may be different between the high schools based on their needs. So the auxiliary gym, we used to call, it's a small gym, can't do that anymore um, because of Title IX. Uh, baseball and softball fields, concession areas. You know, we have to move a little differently now in concessions and um, line management and all those sort of things. And so how people move around in buildings, uh, lobby enhancements, locker room improvements, soccer fields, swimming pools, tennis courts, tracks, and the weight rooms there. And so uh, some of the targeted outcomes that we want to see uh, as a result of this funding support is that for one, we want to reach the desired funding raising goals. So whatever those numbers are, uh, we want to reach those. And then also we plan to see increased participation rates uh, with students and teams, improved inventory maintenance, increased athletic pride, increased attendance at home and away events, improve efficiency with event logistics. There's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes to pull off an event. Uh, we want to make that um, more efficient and, and, and easy as well. Improve spectator experience. So when people come to see us, we want them to come back time and time again from having a good experience. Improve crowd management. Like I said, you know, we have to move differently now uh, in COVID and post COVID. Uh, and increase parent engagement. We always want to see parents connected to what we do. The union has landed on their numbers and so their capital campaign uh, is a million point five um, total. And with that ESSA support, it, it leaves their need at uh, a million and 60,000 that they will be raising um, as a result of um, the ESSA support there. High school support. Uh, some of the, uh, so for Ottawa, detail, like I said, both of these slides are kind of mirror each other, but just in different levels based on where the, students, um, the schools are. So equipment and team um, uniforms, team equipment, um, uniform replacement, kind of on rota rotating cycles there, uh, building and equipment repair, you know, um, and you'll see it on one of the other slides as well. Uh, washer and dryer, you know. We do a lot of laundry in high school, you know, washing uniforms and, and those um, um, equipment, they do suffer some wear and tear on, on those type of things. So equipment um, that's sports specific, such as nets and poles for volleyball or tennis, um, special event support. So some of those events that also help us raise funds, such as um, the I-96 basketball tournament, the turkey trot, the elite challenge, those things that um, were impacted by COVID um, to kind of uh, help keep sustain those and get them off the ground and back to what they normally do. And some of the user fees. So as we use bowling alleys and golf courses, there are user fees. And so we have it broken down into um, years and this spans over the life or the expectancy of the um, ESSER fund uh, timelines. Uh, so we wanna start things as, as early as what we can do for, for this year, all the way up to where uh, the year expense um, expires in year three there. So the, the targeted outcomes for the high school support is increased participation rates again we always want to have uh, more kids involved. We know what the data says about kids being involved in uh, extracurricular and how they do in their overall school performance. Improved inventory maintenance, so hanging on to the things that we do have. Uh, increased athletic pride, you know, um, when kids uh, feel better, um, walk taller, chest stuck out when they have 
matching uniforms and, and, and good-looking uniforms as they go up against some of our counterparts, and an increased parent engagement, parents coming along supporting. And so that price tag there is for $107,500, $107, and it's the same for union, but again, within those categories, it may vary based on where their needs are. So facilities, how's the field? Um, details there. So upgrading that turf replacement. So if you've been out there on the field, uh, if you know anything about turf, you can kind of feel uh, it's at its end of its life its expectancy. We had it installed over a decade ago, and we haven't done anything since then. And so a little story, a behind the scenes story. Prior to it being renovated, you know, we had to sew up the seams on the turf between games with fishing line. So we don't want to get to that situation now where we, we also see some stress on some of the seams now. So replacing it now is our best bet so that it won't cost even more later. Uh, track the track surface, resurface and painted. There's some emerging cracks that we patched and painted over, patched and painted over, but uh, really needs to be done so that uh, we can get some more life expectancy out of that. Um, the PA system, additional scoreboard, so making sure the microphones work when they're supposed to and they don't, the sound doesn't drop out all the time, but add an additional scoreboard on the east end of the stadium there. Golf, tart, golf carts and utility vehicles. So like I said, behind the scenes, it's a lot going on that we try to do and make it look smoothly, but um, uh, we're really stretching ourselves and, and more equipment would help us do that better. Line management systems, ice machines um, in the training rooms and tents um, throughout there. Also, the thing about tents is that we don't just use them at housemen. Sometimes they're at these school events, they go out to school events, if we have John needs them for um, an expo or whatnot, they're multi-use there, but we would like to have those in our inventory. And uh, turnstile counters, so, uh, turnstile counters that count people as they go into the stadium so that we can have a better, um, better uh, tighter control over gate receipts matching attendance there and enhanced signage. Um, signage and educating people of how the stadium operates and they can answer some of their own questions by reading signs um, and having some of those signs be permanent uh, at the stadium there. So year one, year two, year three, those are the things that we're trying to do, uh, doing one ice machine at a time. We have repaired ice machines so many times that it really, we could have bought one. So we want to kind of get out of that situation of, of piecing and um, patching things when we should really uh, kind of go and invest and in getting some long-term things out of there. So some of the golf carts, the utility vehicles, takes a lot to move that stuff around. Uh, like I said, the turn counter. So the targeted outcomes that we would like to see there is improve efficiency with the event logistics, improve spectator experience, improve crowd management, increase attendance uh, at events, and, uh, and improve uh, attendance count. Middle school support. So you know, um, the Grand Rapids Public Schools Foundation uh, is our biggest support for great kids, great sports. Um, and, um, and so like I said, I don't need to recount of the challenging situation around fundraising for the last 18 months, but being able to continue operating those programs as we have in place there. So s spreading some support or, or amongst them for the next two years that would help them also get their legs back under them as well. Uh, so, and out of those outcomes, we would like to see increased participation, uh, excuse me, uh, increased participation rates, improve inventory maintenance, increased athletic pride, and increased parent engagement there. Building level support, so the building level ADs, we have 15 uh, middle school ADs, and so some of the things that they need to replenish in their inventory at the very building level. We know $5,000 is not a lot, but um, it will help them out. Uh, so this is really supplemental support uh, up against their annual budgets there, so we have planned on doing that for them as well. Professional development. So because I'm involved in physical education uh, as well, I want to provide some um, um, training opportunities for our PE staff who are closely related to um, athletics. A lot of them are coaches as well, but also um, getting them, like I said, in the environment of expertise beyond their own. So uh, the Society of Health and Physical Educators is shaped. Um, they do regional conferences and national conferences. So getting some of our uh, lead teachers there so they can come back and share with our entire department there. Uh, and then some classroom supplies and equipment there. So some of the targeted outcomes, and we have that broken, over, broken out over three years, targeted outcomes would be lesson plan, incorporating more achievement strategies, learning to use data to improve achievement. So PE is no different from any other course subject where we should be using data to improve um, achievement there. Uh, increased levels of student engagement and participation in class, you know, um, making sure kids are not only learning but being engaged in that class as well. Coaching education, again, 
uh, having um, our coaches in training sessions, conference seminars and workshops as well. Uh, the MIAA um, conference that happens here in Michigan, uh, having them be a part of that because it's a chance to dialogue with their colleagues across the state. Um, and for our athletic directors and then for our coaches, the Michigan High School Athletic Association Coaching Association, having them be a part of that. And so paying for their uh, membership and their association fees to be a part of that, that learning process, that exchange process, we think will be beneficial. We would like to see some of those um, uh, target outcomes to be increased participation rates, uh, uh, increased lower level connectivity in the transition years. So those kids going from elementary to middle school and then from middle school to high school, and then higher uh, retention rates, so hanging on to the kids there. And so that comes in at a price tag of 150,000 there. Technology, NCAA, um, excuse me, Eligibility Center portal upgrade. And so uh, the NCAA, uh, for athletes who are, or student athletes or student scholars who are athletes and are considering um, athletic scholarships at the collegiate <coughs> level, uh, they need to clear the Eligibility Center. And so um, having some software that will help that process um, be a little more accessible and a little easier uh, and more like a one-stop shopping I think is what we would like to achieve. So spending some time planning with the high school counselors on laying that out, actually getting that software and then implementing that. And what we want to see in that target outcome is increased number of students accessing and using the NCAA eligibility uh, center portal. Uh, Esports, I mentioned that in the beginning. So uh, exploration, feasibility review, planning and implementation of esports clubs at the comprehensive high schools. And so some funding support towards that, uh, starting out with the interest survey. Uh, we know there's interest out there um, and see where it is and, and how to launch that. Then getting the software and then those uh, uh, licenses there. So what we would like to see out of that outcome is increased student engagement in after school activities. Transportation, so um, uh, mentioned that we have some smaller teams, bowling, uh, tennis, golf. And um, traditionally, we would have to schedule or book a 52 passenger school bus for seven or eight kids, you know. And so, um, and then, you know, we, the challenges with transportation uh, that have, uh, we're still working on in terms of number of drivers and being available and those sort of things. And so, um, uh, purchasing uh, passenger vans, 12 passenger vans, um, 12 seat passenger vans. Uh, for the high schools, try to get one to two for each high school um, to transport some of those smaller teams there. But also uh, multi-use. So we use the things advanced after school, but there may be a student group or two that may need to um, travel during the school day for a uh, different event. You know, it could be National Honor Society or some other group that may need transportation during the day. And for a smaller group where it doesn't make sense to try to book a 52 passenger van for 10, 12 kids there. So uh, getting two of those, uh, if the dollars stretch for each of those um, high schools there. That would be at 80,000. Uh, Title IX, again, as I men uh, mentioned before, that's kind of on the consciousness of a lot of uh, folks in the last several years there. Um, but getting some, uh, uh, launching an awareness campaign and getting some printed resources and material and online materials to our schools and our buildings and our students to understand um, the significance of the Title IX law, what it means, and the, how it covers the K-12 educational setting as well as post-secondary. Um, and so making sure people are aware of what the law, because most when they hear Title IX, they think of sports and they think of, does the girls' uniforms equal the boys' uniform? But Title IX is much broader than that now uh, under the Department of Education, where it covers sex-based discrimination that includes all forms of sexual harassment in the K-12 setting. So um, our students and our staff need to be aware of what that means, uh, be reminded of it, um, and so that we are all uh, in compliance with not only the law, but just have a positive atmosphere for all who have a right to pursue education and employment in the educational setting there. And then having some online courses uh, available to students as well as staff um, where they can um, explore and learn more about Title IX. I think my time up. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have any comments or questions. Greg will answer them. <laughs> I, 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 if I may. Um, I know our ROT is probably not considered athletic, but where does that fit into some of the activities and things that you do? So ROTC? ROTC, yeah. 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 So ROTC, is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a course. It's not really considered um, an extracurricular activity. It's a course there. And so if there's, um, 
any support that could be generated. Some of the relief that, is, um, that we received from ESSER for standard things, we could consider some additional uh, support for ROTC from our annual, situa annual budget situation. So, but it's not, it's not, it's not extra, extracurricular. Uh, drills, they do uh, camping, they do quite, quite, a bit, quite a bit of things and quite a bit of students um, actually participate in it. And so it, I'd, I'd like to hear some more of that. Yeah, and, uh, and, and like I said, you know, again, with the relief that we get from this round would allow us to, to um, do some other things for some other areas as well. And, and then, with respect to ROTC, if you're asking about like, because um, often those are smaller classes, board drills and practices and parades and things like that, we can use some of the transportation, um, the 12 passenger buses that um, Mr. Johnson kind of referred to as, or 12 passenger vans, excuse me, that he referred to as a way to kind of allow those young people to attend some of those events. But it is a credit bearing course for our high school scholars at this point. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Question. Do we still have the uh, eligibility um, uh, academic performance in order to participate in sports? Yes. Okay. And, so and what the, is that currently? The Board of Ed policy says you must carry a 2.0. 2.0. <laughs> and, and is there any thinking with respect to what we might do with ESSER funds to support uh, making sure that our athletes, all of our athletic uh, participants, yeah. maintain that or surpass that 2.0? Yeah, so um, um, you may have heard in the previous ESSER presentation uh, of, from the academic um, department about um, after school tutoring support and athletes would be a, a part of that for all students. And we are also exploring some other additional kind of extended um, school year and other opportunities for our young, young folks. And just as a reminder, as we're doing our ESSER reports, we're putting them, the full reports online and then they're not a stagnant document. We're looking at them and kind of we'll be revising and that's why we wanna make sure that people understand we have outcomes related to it, but depending on what we learn or the need, it is flexible and it's very fluid. I have one question. What is the timeline for Ottawa to confirm what their goals are and uh, just their plan for, for raising funds? As well, I see that the uh, Ottawa and Union have the equal match from the ESSER funds, but outside of that, what would be Ottawa's timeline? So we're really trying to nail down their numbers probably like in the next week or two. And so what's, what's going on behind the scenes is getting some, um, some accurate estimates on what they want to achieve in terms of uh, improvements. Is it possible for us to receive an update on that when they've just confirmed and locked those things in? Thank you. We'll provide that to, to Dr. Roby. Thank you. Yeah, similar, uh, you know, some of the parent fundraisers, there's a lot of, you know, parent groups that, that try to meet the, the shortcomings of funding. And so I'm wondering if we can hear uh, more about that. And, and just in general, the actual number of students that actually participates mm -hmm. in our sports overall, is it, is it 5,000? What, what is it? So it'd be, it'd be interesting uh, as a report to get that, that kind of... Uh, uh, information. So, so prior to COVID, we had approximately over 6,200 kids participating in after-school athletics. And so, um, uh, when COVID hit, that kind of number kind of changed, and so we're kind of getting our feet back underneath us and getting kids participating once again. But prior to COVID, it was over 6,200. And then I'm hoping that we're gonna we're gonna be proactive and not wait till the ESSA funds uh, end, and then everything drops off. And so, hopefully, we're we're, we're looking at fundraising. We're looking oh, at yeah. ways to continuing that, Absolutely. that trend. Okay. Absolutely, yeah. And so, like I said, you know, there was a category that said um, special event support. And that, that uh, involves those special fundraisers that help mm -hmm. us raise funds to keep um, sports uh, free of charge for students. Great, thanks. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you. Good evening, President Schottke, Dr. Roby, distinguished members of the board. Uh, I'll, there are a lot of things uh, related to technology uh, that are uh, uh, certainly have come up as a result of COVID and that we're looking at going forward. And so uh, I'll try to be brief. 
uh, but I'll also go a little quickly. So stop me if uh, you have questions along the way. So our, the, uh, the intention of expenditures for technology and ASA really fall into four uh, main categories. The first is keeping students online. So this uh, envelops these items here, which include uh, maintaining one-to-one -one equipment for students throughout the district, uh, and that includes upgrading existing devices as well as um, purchasing new devices to be able to stay on a cycle where we're able to uh, maintain newer devices for students, uh, supporting online curriculum, materials and tools, uh, including homework. Uh, home internet connectivity, uh, we have been providing hotspots and home internet offerings to parents since the start of COVID, and we wanna continue to do that in order to continue to close the homework gap uh, so that technology is usable uh, at school, the one-to-one -one technology is. Uh, learning management systems, uh, we currently run Schoology and Seesaw as our learning management systems for all of our students, uh, K through 12, and want to continue to do that because uh, it will provide the supports for online access to schoolwork anytime, anywhere, uh, parent access, uh, and communication with teachers. We're also gonna do virtual classroom and events licensing, which is really for uh, Zoom and Screencastify, which are two tools that uh, teachers uh, really grabbed hold of during COVID and have now identified that these are uh, extremely powerful tools for instruction. And so uh, it also facilitates virtual student learning, remote field trips, uh, improved equity for event participants who aren't able to participate in person. And, uh, and Screencastify allows for visual teacher created online content. Classroom management, uh, uh, I'm sorry, classroom student device management. This is opportunities for um, uh, instructors to help students stay focused during class time, uh, prevent digital distractions, uh, and then it provides them analytics so that they can understand what students are using the technology for uh, in and out of class and, and tailor instruction to meet that. Remote device management, uh, this really is uh, about maintaining content filtering both in and out of school for our students with their one-to-one -one devices uh, and allowing the devices to have uh, a, uh, uh, the same experience for all students uh, so, you know, one iPad isn't different from, from another for a student, same with Chromebooks and other devices. And then lastly on this one is remote tech support, which uh, just kind of beefs up our technical support tools. Uh, now that, you know, during COVID, we really picked up more uh, support needs than we had prior, where we're now supporting many more parents, many more students with devices at home, with content at home. We want to be able to support them as well as we can. The next area is digital fine arts. So really two big buckets here. One is uh, art music student devices. Uh, there uh, are uh, specific art music digital tools that we were hoping to um, deploy with devices for classrooms, for art music classrooms prior to COVID. And we were actually days away from doing that deployment prior to COVID shutdown. And, uh, and the technology and resources there kind of got usurped so that we could turn uh, uh, pivot and do one-to-one. -one. And so we want to restart that and be able to provide that for our fine arts classrooms. And then at the secondary level, there's digital media classrooms and, uh, and this line item is specific for um, that instruction. Classroom technology systems. Uh, this is really a broad bucket that affects almost all of our classroom technology systems across the district. Classroom technology systems are those things that exist in the classroom for the teacher to teach with. So that includes document cameras, uh, audio systems, uh, projectors, all of that stuff that's in classrooms. Some of our oldest is uh, 10 plus years old and, uh, and has been, uh, you know, we've been trying to upgrade it and keep it intact, but really, um, you know, 10 plus years is a very long time for technology. And so we want to do a forklift upgrade to those oldest systems uh, and get them in line so that we have equity across the board in terms of the tools that are available to instructors in the classroom uh, during class time. And um, that includes the classroom cameras as well, uh, provides opportunities for interactive remote, distance learning, um, all of the things that uh, that we discovered during COVID are really strengths we can grow upon now. And the next area is instructional technology software. So this is really um, products that are supporting materials for uh, curriculum. Uh, so Pear Deck for interactive lessons, uh, Class Kick for interactive classrooms. We have some supporting materials for ELA, both News ELA and Kids A to Z. Uh, keyboarding, which has been a need identified uh, across the board, uh, so Typing Club is the solution that has been picked there. Uh, classroom management with Classcraft, uh, Nearpod for SEL, Digital Citizenship and Interactive Lessons, uh, Class for Zoom, which is a virtual classroom. It's, uh, if you think of a Zoom meeting, it's really 
uh, turning a Zoom meeting into a virtual classroom. So you have a teacher who's in the front of the classroom and you can call on students. And as, a, as an instructor, you have, uh, uh, it's, it's Zoom on steroids. They have a lot more capabilities with Zoom than, uh, than, uh, than we're used to. And then lastly, the software management reporting, uh, and that's with Learn Platform. This allows us to streamline uh, all of these tools, these and others that are available to our instructors so that um, they know what tools are available, how to get access to them, uh, and then it provides some ROI for the district in terms of how much are they being used, uh, do we continue the tool, do we look at other solutions, do we uh, uh, take other steps to increase engagement with them. Any questions? Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. I just want to reiterate, as um, our community and board have listened to a couple of different ESSER presentations we've done, we started out with academics, we also did social emotional learning, and now this was athletics and technology. There are some overlaps between some of the um, the program, so you may have heard like pieces of it in other places, and we're just trying to make sure that as we are looking to how to kind of uplift um, the experiences for our scholars and our staff, that there is overlap between each of those areas, and none of them necessarily are a standalone um, by themselves. Okay, thank you. We'll move forward with our agenda now. Uh, we're on to our action items, and uh, the only action item this afternoon, evening, excuse me, is our purchasing agenda. Are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, may I have a motion for approval? So move. Support. Ms. Lewis, please call the roll. Ms. Grant? Yes. Ms. Lewis, yes. Reverend Tias? Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Dr. Baker? Yes. Ms. Davis? Absolutely excused. Dr. Flores? Yes. President Shanky? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Next is our consent agenda grouping. Is there any discussion or any questions? Motion to approve the consent agenda. Support. Ms. Lewis, please call the roll. Ms. Grant? Yes. Ms. Lewis, yes. Reverend Matias? Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Dr. Baker? Yes. Ms. Davis, absent, excused. Dr. Flores? Yes. President Shockey? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. All right, moving on to our discussion items, just two brief remarks this evening. Um, first, board members, um, if you didn't see it today, please look at your email. Julie Anderson reached out to see if you are available for a half-day uh, retreat, sort of extension of our work session on November 8th. That's a Monday. Uh, so we'd go from 1 to 5 o'clock that day and then move into our work session at 5.30. This really is um, so that we are able to do a deep dive into the um, strategic plan that was going to be presented to us uh, following all of the input sessions. And so just an opportunity for us to have a, um, a longer, more robust discussion before we move to a vote that day. So uh, please respond to Julie. Let us know if you're available. And then next, just a reminder that next week, Monday, we have our annual financial audit review. Uh, that'll be at 4.30 p.m., followed by the Finance Committee meeting at 5.30. Okay, that concludes um, our discussion items. So I will move on to public comment for non-agenda items only. Uh, Ms. Anderson's going to look for additional cards. Uh, and if she does that, I will have Ms. Lewis read the protocol for public comment. Individuals will be called to the speaker table one at a time to address the board during subsequent public comment time. Public comment is limited to three minutes per person. You will need to state your full name before providing your comment. We will then start the timer at the beginning of your public comment time and provide you with a one minute notice indicating one minute remains. You will need to complete your uh, comment time upon being notified that three minutes have passed. Board members do not respond to the public comment. Concerns will be given to the appropriate staff we value your input and thank you for sharing. Okay, thank you, Ms. Lewis. Um, it is my pleasure to welcome forward Don Sims, Mr. Sims. Good evening and welcome. Good evening. Dr. Roby and board, thank you for allowing me to speak today on behalf of the bus drivers. <laughs> my name is Don Sims and I have been transporting GRPS students safely for the last 20 years. I'm proud to say so. Yeah. But uh, and, and in behalf of the bus drivers that serve students and families of GRPS, we are here to ask for your help. 
We have asked Dean Transportation to agree to a fair contract and they have said no. We have agreed to their wage increase offer. We have agreed to allow them to offer new drivers more money if they do not need health insurance. What we are asking now is for them to agree to two things. Number one, provide a minimum contribution to insurance that is an equal value to what drivers receive in extra wages if they don't need insurance. Number two, acknowledgement of longevity by paying drivers with five years of service that don't need insurance. One dollar an hour more than new hire drivers. We need your assistance in addressing Dean to demand an equitable settlement. Dean's inability to recruit and retain drivers is hurting GRPS students, disrespecting experienced drivers like they are like they are will only make the problem worse. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comment. Next, I'd like to welcome forward Danisha Diaz, Ms. Diaz. Good evening. Hello. Hi. Hi, my name is Denisha Diaz, and I'm a parent of two kids who go to Grand Rapids Public Schools. And recently, um, my daughter's friend was exposed to COVID and basically was positive. And my concern is that, like, the school didn't know what to do. And, like, I even looked on the website, and there wasn't, like, much of a protocol or guidelines. It's like, who do we call to report this? And then I was kind of upset because I got like a 10, like school starts at nine. 10 minutes before nine, I get a call from the nurse and it's like, oh, by the way, your daughter can't come to school today. And I'm like, why? And it's like, oh, because, you know, this kid has been exposed to, you know, COVID and her and eight other kids can't come. And I'm like, well, why, why not the whole classroom? So it's like no protocol and saying like, well, you know, who has this student been around? It's like, oh, your daughter ate lunch with the student, so she can't go. And like, I was talking to my daughter about it, and she's like, well, when we eat lunch, it's not a sign. So kids come and sit at the table. So it's not just those eight kids who eat at the table with her, because other kids come and sit there too. So what about them as well? So I was very upset with that. And then also, I have a younger one. so. It was weird that she was allowed to go to school and my oldest wasn't. I have a, a first grader and I have a fifth grader. So my concern is, so when I found out personally from the family, I went ahead and I'm calling around trying to find somewhere to get my daughter taken care of. And I called four places and they're like, you gotta have an appointment, you gotta have an appointment. And I was like, you know, it, you know we have a lot of families who don't know how to use the internet. We have families who don't know how to, you know, oh yeah, Rite Aid has it or this place and stuff like that. And I know that there's this place. One oh, sorry. Oh, one okay, more one minute. minute. Yeah. Um, MDHHS has like a program where the schools can um, get free access to um, get testing. And I was wondering, you know, if we could look into something like that so that families don't have to go out searching, but that we will have those resources available to us. And also, um, you know, just a more stricter protocol on what to do. You know, who do we report, you know, whether a kid has COVID to, what are the steps? You know, we didn't know my daughter would have to be off for a whole week, you know, or whatnot. And then also homework. Like, I asked the teacher, the teacher's like, I don't know. So now she's gonna be sitting at home doing nothing. So I just want more of a, a guideline on what, what's gonna happen, like what's the step, so that every parent knows. You know, I don't know if we need like nurses during the weekend, because it could have been resolved over the weekend so the parents getting calls 10 minutes before school started. So. Three minutes. All right, well thank you so much for your comment. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, uh, next, can we please welcome forward Brett Graham. Mr. Graham, welcome. Good evening. Good evening. 
Uh, my name is Brett Graham, and I'm a parent of a student at Southwest uh, Community Campus, a uh, second grade student. And first of all, I'd like to thank the teachers at GRPS and specifically at Southwest. Um, just with the pandemic, I think our faculty at Southwest stepped up and did a phenomenal job. Our student was home for the year, and the virtual worked very well for him. We're happy to have him back this year, but <laughs> virtual worked well for him. Um, a few concerns. Uh, I was on a planning committee with Margaret Vega and Brett Kincaid uh, from Site Studio and Kendall College of Art and Design, as well as some students from Kendall College and some students from Southwest Community Campus itself. And they were working to design a new playground. And we spent close to five months at least, uh, January through May of 2020, um, talking about it. and. The students designed a final concept, and um, Mr. Helmholt was involved in it. And I am curious, and I think I probably am a voice for a lot of the parents and faculty at the school, for wondering what is the status on the new playground, and when um, we can expect to see, to get right to it, groundbreaking on it. Um, so we can provide a great experience for the kids because right now they, to be blunt, they have a giant broken asphalt pad to play on. Um, and they have some playground equipment which is older and it just, it's time for an upgrade. And I think uh, the school would like to know where it is in the process. Um, the next issue, um, curious, what the uh, what we at Southwest Community Campus can expect to see One with minute. our with our teachers? Uh, there was a Spanish-speaking teacher that is no longer at our school, um, which now reduces the amount of Spanish-speaking teachers to the student ratio. So, what can we do? What can we expect to see for replacing that teacher? Um, as it's hard to find bilingual teachers. Um, so what can we see, you know, especially as it was mentioned earlier tonight, um, this is a very challenging time for teachers to succeed due to the pandemic and now we're shorting them and they have more students to handle, they have virtual issues to handle, there's all of these issues and now we have sent one of our bilingual teachers away and are we looking for a new teacher, are we looking for multiple to help out? So I think there's a, a shortage and we could use some help. Um, and I, I think that's all I have for tonight. Okay, great. Thank you so much for your comments. Okay, very good. We'll welcome forward uh, Maria Romero. Ms. Romero. Good evening. Puede usar el. Sí, por favor. Gracias. Um, mi nombre es Mario. Okay, thank you very much. Es, okay, mi nombre es María Romero. Soy. Um, Ella le va a ayudar con el inglés. Okay. Um, mi nombre es María Romero. Soy mamá de un estudiante de la escuela Southwest. Tengo una niña de seis años que me en primer grado. Uh, y good, tuve. Good afternoon. My name is Maria Romero. I have a six-year-old daughter. Y tuve dos hijos más que ahora tienen 26 y 29 años que estuvieron en la escuela Southwest. I have two other children now, 26 and 29 years old, whom also attended the school of Southwest. Okay. Lo que quiero es como hacer unas preguntas. I'd like to ask some que questions. Que me tienen un poco molesta. 
which I'm concerned about. Y por eso estoy aquí. This is why I'm here. Espero que no les moleste y que pues pueda yo resolver mi problema. I hope my questions do not upset you and that we can resolve my issues. Mi pregunta es ¿Qué tenemos que hacer para que haya cambios en nuestra escuela Sadwes? My question is, what changes do we need to have in order for something to, something to change at Southwest? Um, queremos que se cumplan las promesas que se hacen a la escuela y que nunca llegan. We want the promises that were made to be something real. ¿Cuál es la preferencia de nosotros como padres que nuestros hijos acudan a una escuela bilingüe? What are the preferences that we have as parents for our children to go to a bilingual school? La preferencia mía como madre hispana es que nuestros hijos tengan, sepan dos idiomas. My preference as a Hispanic mother is that our children know two languages. Y que no pierdan sus culturas. And not to lose their culture. Ellos son el futuro de nuestro país, de they, este país, que they, nos ha dado muchas oportunidades. They are the future of our country, where they have many opportunities. ¿Qué recursos tienen nuestros hijos que no hablan inglés? What en nuestras escuelas bilingües. What resources do our students that do not speak English have in the schools where they don't have any bilingual? Mi respuesta es porque en las escuelas bilingües como en las adwes hacen falta muchas cosas. Como tener libros en español. My answer is like at Southwest School Uh, some of the resources they lack of are bilingual books. En mi pregunta número cuatro es, queremos que los padres seamos escuchados. Question number four, er, or comment number four is, I'd like for parents to be heard. Cuando pasa algo en la escuela. When something happens at school. Con nuestros hijos. With our children. Y queremos poder nosotros como padres Hablar con el principal, que nos escuche y que el principal sea escuchado. Porque somos, hablamos, son, es la escuela, hablamos, somos casi la mayoría de habla hispana. As the parents, we would like to be able to speak with the principal, to be heard by the principal, and have the principal listen as well. Okay. Queremos que haya recursos para esta escuela que nunca llegan. Que no queremos promesas, queremos transparencia. We want resources to come to this school, not the promises that have not been, that have not come true. ¿Y cuáles son las condiciones que el distrito tiene para cada uno de nuestras escuelas y nuestros hijos, para nuestros hijos y que estén seguros? What are the conditions ella? that each one of these districts have for our children? Estoy frente a ustedes. Pidiendo respuestas. I sit here in front of you asking for answers. Queremos escuchar los motivos que hay para que nuestro principal se fuera de la escuela. We want to know what the reasons are for the principal leaving the school. No queremos um, respuestas falsas. Um, We quiero don't. que recuerden que nuestro nuestra escuela es academia bilingüe. No estamos pidiendo lujos. We don't want false answers. We want you to remember that our school is a bilingual academy. Solo queremos ser escuchados y que nos entiendan. Esto es como una cachetada para mí como madre al enterarnos por un email que se nos iba el principal Carlos de la Barrera. We want to be heard and understood. These news were like a slap in the face as a mother to myself, learning that the principal was leaving the school via email. Yo quisiera saber cuál fue motivo, razón o circunstancia 
I'd que like, haya pasado para que se nos fuera el príncipe. I'd like to know what the motive, reason, and circumstances were for the principal to leave the school. Porque siempre escuchamos encontró una nueva posición y nunca hay una explicación. Siempre es lo mismo. Sabemos cuál es la respuesta. Because we always hear he found another position. Uh, we want to know what the answer is. Nosotros los padres queremos tener voz y voto en la escuela. We as, so we as parents want to have a voice and a vote in the school. Queremos poder hablar con el, princip el principal que nos escuche y que sea escuchado. We want to be able to speak with the principal and be heard. Por nosotros. By us. Nosotros no estamos pidiendo más, solo queremos ser partícipes de la escuela. We ask for no more. We only want to be participants of the school. Y que siempre nos escuchen. And to always be heard. Eso es todo. This is Muchas all. gracias. Thank you very much. Espero no verlos incomodados. I hope I haven't upset you. Y esperamos pronto tener una respuesta. And I hope to soon have an answer. Porque lo necesitamos. Because we do need one. All right. Thank you very much for your comments. Gracias. Thank you. Gracias. Okay. Next, I'd like to welcome forward Evelina Garcia. Ms. Garcia. Good evening. Welcome. Buenas tardes. Uh, mi nombre es Evelina. My name is Evelina. Soy madre de dos hijos de la escuela Southwest Elementary. I'm mother of two children at Southwest Elementary. Pero ya tuve dos hijos dentro de esta escuela de la misma. But I too have also had two other children grow and that went to this school. Estoy aquí porque siempre hemos tenido necesidades. I'm here because we've always had necessities. Uh, con todo respeto, y no nos han apoyado. With all due respect, we haven't really been supported. Uh, dijeron que iban a poner un parque y no han hecho nada. Y con el dinero que sobrara de la escuela Middle High, iban a hacer el parque y no se ha logrado nada. We were told we were going to have a new playground for the kids, and that hasn't happened. We were told that with the money left over from Middle High, that would be something that, that would be a possibility, but nothing yet. Ese parque, desde que mi niña comenzó en el 2009, se cayó, se quebró su brazo, y les dijo, les digo esto porque hasta ahorita sigue igual. ¿Cuánto tiempo tenemos que esperar más? In 2009, my daughter fell and broke her arm in that park. Um, we were told that we would get something done and I don't know how much longer to wait. Les digo esto porque no estaba involucrada mucho en la escuela y nadie dice nada, así se queda todos callados. I say this to you now because at the time I wasn't very involved in the school. However, no one's ever said anything and everyone just stays quiet. Ahorita los niños hasta se pelean por uno o dos columpios que están más o menos en forma y hay otros parques que hay más juegos bonitos y el de nosotros ahorita, pues ellos lo miran feo, más viejos, que ya necesitamos algo diferente. Nowadays, the children in the school fight over one swing that's somewhat better looking or in better shape than the other. Necesitamos más también personal para cuidar a los niños en el recreo. We also need more personal uh, during the recess time to watch over the children. El otro punto es, ¿qué es lo que están haciendo como escuela y como distrito? ¿Cuáles son los planes para que no tengan tantos niños en cada aula? My question is, what are you doing as a school and a, as a district? What are you doing for the changes in the classrooms? Estamos teniendo también problemas con el transporte. Yo soy una madre de estas que ya van tres veces que pasa una preocupación. We are also having issues with transport. 
I am one of these mothers that is also having issue with transportation. Porque el, el bus viene a dejarlos entre cinco a cinco y media. Uno hace planes o está en la parada esperando a nuestros hijos y de repente hablan que no hay bus o que va tarde. Muchos padres trabajan y se confían a la hora exacta que van a llegar sus hijos. Kids sometimes get dropped off by 5.30. Most of us have plans. We have lives. And sometimes they call us last minute and say they have no transportation. Y pues de repente salen con una llamada que pues que no van a llegar luego. Imagínense qué preocupación para nosotros como padres y no solo yo, sino que hay muchos padres con esta misma preocupación. Sometimes I get a sudden call that the children will not be arriving right away. This worries me as a parent as well as uh, other parents. Ah, el otro punto es una pregunta, ¿por qué se nos va nuestro principal? Necesitamos un principal bilingüe. Lo que tengo que decir de nuestro principal de la barrera es que siempre estuvo con muchos proyectos y no lo apoyaron. Uh, my other point is a question. I too want to know why the principal left. Uh, principal Barrera was bilingual. We need someone bilingual to be able to communicate with. And I feel that he had many projects but was never supported. Nuestra escuela de las AUS elementaria es una joya, no la queremos dejar perder. ¿Saben por qué digo que es una joya? Porque es una escuela bilingüe y eso les, en el futuro les va a ayudar a cada uno de nuestros hijos. Southwest Elementary is a jewel to me. I say it's a jewel because it's a bilingual school and this is something that's going to be benefit our children in the future. Nuestro principal de la barrera nos gustó cómo comenzó trabajando en esta escuela. Siempre daba pues la bienvenida a los niños muy amable. Hubiera frío, nieve o como estuviera el clima, él andaba afuera. I loved how the principal uh, the Barrera was with our children. He was always receiving and warm towards our children. Even in the winter, he would receive the kids outside. O cubriendo algunos salones porque no había maestro, o cubriendo en el recreo siempre con mucha paciencia, cosa que nunca habíamos pasado antes con otros directores. He would also cover from, uh, for other teachers that weren't available or in the cafeteria. This is something I've never experienced or seen with other principals. Siempre nos daba las gracias cuando miraba padres dentro de la escuela y a todos los que estábamos haciendo palomitas, porque se hacen todos los viernes palomitas. Exigimos ser parte del plan del mejoramiento de nuestra escuela. He was always grateful and thankful. He would always say thank you to the parents that every Friday we would be there and make popcorns for the students. Muchas gracias y esa es nuestra preocupación. Thank you for listening. This was my comment. Thank you very much for your comment. Muchas gracias por su Okay, may we please welcome forward, uh, forgive me if I don't say this right, Aluvia Velasquez. Good evening. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Good evening. Mi nombre es Eluvia Velázquez. My name is Eluvia Velázquez. Soy padre de familia de la escuela Southwest. I am a parent of the school of Southwest. Y una de las de las niñas que va en la en la Middle High. And of one, one of my girls goes to Middle High. Desde la, soy, soy padre de familia de la Miro High. Mi propósito de estar aquí es para expresarme algunas preocupaciones sobre la escuela. My purpose of being here is to express some of my worries of the school. Con respeto a la carta que nos mandaron de la renuncia del señor de la barrera. In regards to the letter that we received on uh, the principal Barrera. En el papel decía que él se va porque encontró una mejor oportunidad. The paper described that he was leaving because he found a better opportunity. Seamos transparentes para hablar con la verdad. Si sabemos que el distrito tiene mucho dinero. We need to be transparent and speak with the truth. We know that the district has the financials. ¿Por qué no pagarle al principal en la escuela si se encontró otra mejor oportunidad afuera? 
why not just pay the principal more if he found a better opportunity? Porque personalmente yo el viernes después de la venta de palomitas. Personally, myself, on Fridays after the popcorn sale. Y otras madres que fuimos a despedirlo a él en su oficina. Y yo le hice esa pregunta. Along with many other mothers, we went to his office and asked him this question. Que si era verdad que él se iba porque se encontró otra oportunidad mejor. We asked him if it was true he was really leaving because he found a better opportunity. Y él nos respondió diciendo que eso no era cierto. Él no se iba por esa razón. He replied this was not true. That wasn't his reason for leaving. Que él se fue porque nunca recibió apoyo del distrito. Nunca recibió ayuda, ayuda del distrito. He was leaving because he never received support or help from the district. Y por eso una de las razones de la cual él se fue porque él tenía también muchos planes, muchos proyectos en mente y de la cual nunca le dieron apoyo. He mentioned he left because he never had the support on any of the, the projects and plans he had. Nosotros necesitamos un principal bilingüe en la escuela. We need a bilingual principal at the school. Tanto como también necesitamos un mejoramiento en nuestro parque de juego para nuestros niños. As well as we need a, a much better park uh, for in the playground for the children. Y nos hacen falta muchos maestros que de la cual nos acaban de quitar dos. We also need a lot of teachers. Two of them were just removed. Y la verdad, hay más niños en una en un aula de lo que debería de ser. I also think there are more students in one classroom than there should be. Entonces, si el, si el, nos faltan más maestros en la escuela y nos faltan más personales. So if we need more teachers and more personnel at the school. En lugar de que nos den más maestros, nos los están quitando. Instead of giving us more teachers, you're taking more teachers from us. Y ahora con el principal temporal que no habla español. And now with a temporary principal that does not speak Spanish. ¿Y cómo le vamos a hacer cada vez que tengamos un problema para con, comunicarnos con él? How are we supposed to communicate every time we have an issue with him? Uh, ¿Proveerán un intérprete? Are you going to provide an interpreter? Si no alcanzamos para pagar el sueldo a otros maestros, ¿cómo van a, a pagar un intérprete para que nos ayuden a comunicarnos con el principal? Sabemos que cuando se hacen las taxas de las casas, ahí estamos pagando las escuelas públicas. We know that when we do our taxes every year, we're paying the public schools. Queremos un, un principal bilingüe. We want to be able to have a bilingual principal. Y qué mejor el señor Julian Ramirez. And who better than Mr. Julian Ramirez. ¿Por qué no le han dado esa posición que él espera? Why hasn't he received that position that he's waiting for? ¿Por qué buscar otros principales que ya están jubilados? Why look for other principals that have already retired? Cuando tenían bilingües y los echaron. When you had bilinguals and were let go. Y de acuerdo al plan estratégico. In accordance to the strategic plan. Más de los puntos que se compartió es buscar y detener empleados. More than half the points that were shared on there were to search for more employees. Incluyendo principales. Including principals. ¿Por qué si ya los tienen y los dejan ir? Why, if you already have them, you let them go. Aquí hay gato encerrado. Uh, o como que aquí están ocultando algo hacia nosotros. Is there something that you are not telling us? ¿Por qué quiere, porque queremos un principal bilingüe. We want a uh, bilingual principal. Ahora quizás muchos de aquí dirán, ah, es que no lo sabíamos de todas las necesidades que que hacen falta en nuestra escuela. Many of us here would probably say we didn't know, but there are a lot of necessities in the school. Pero ahora ya lo saben a través de nosotros los padres que quizás con el tiempo no estábamos muy involucrados en la escuela. But due to us parents at the school, we, you all know now. Y ahora estamos más al pendiente de nuestra escuela y de nuestros hijos. And now we are more aware of our schools and our children. Y de hoy en adelante queremos ver hechos y no más dichos. And from this day on, we want to be, see more facts and not anything said. 
Porque unos padres unidos jamás serán vencidos. Because united parents will never be uh, combated. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. All right, I'd like to welcome forward Alexa Adi. Ms. Adi? All right, I'm not seeing Ms. Adi. Uh, welcome forward Cortland McSwain. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, my name is Cortland McSwain. Um, I am the owner of the West Michigan Rams Youth Football Program. Um, I offer mentoring. Um, my major thing is finding somewhere, finding resources to help these kids. I work with GRPS students. Um, parents, they, they, they call me, they send me text messages. We, you are doing a wonderful job with our students. Um, teachers, they send me letters, they show me, uh, I, I get progress reports. Um, my main thing is um, I highlight um, workplace and ethics, interpersonal skills, um, personal growth and, de and development, and my whole system is working, you know, and it's getting cold right now. So my main thing is I'm looking for somewhere to um, shelter these kids while we helping them. And it's an after school program, you know? And um, my main thing is their focus, their growth, um, them becoming, them becoming the leaders of tomorrow, them being um, high students, you know? And, you know, we see uh, Grand Rapids Christian, we see Catholic Central getting their kids to division one places, you know? And I see kids with great division one potential at a young age. And, you know, my main focus is to make sure their academics is to par, up to par, you know, and I have a lot of smart kids. So um, my main focus is really to partner with GRPS and to see what I can do to help all you guys, you know, um, not only just sports, um, just to bring in just do, do, doing things around the community, you know, giving back to the community, making sure these kids minds stay focused on positivity versus negativity, you know? And um, these kids, they, they get off of school, you know, and like one of the parents said, you know, homework, you know, it's, I, I, don't see, I don't see a lot of homework, you know, being given out. So it's like more time on, focused on TV and music, you know, and that really brainwashes our kids. So to keep our kids up to par, the after school program that I offer, Hi-5-4 LLC, it's, you know, it's a wonderful thing. So the only thing I'm asking for is, you know, resources, you know, to help you guys, you know, to help our students' future. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Great. Thank you for your comments. Okay. Uh, superintendent's comments, Dr. Roby. We will be following up with um, all those who made public comments. Our our personnel and um, leadership will be following up with folks to make sure that they get appropriate answers um, to the questions raised. So thank you once again for public comments. Um, again, I think this has been a great evening for an opportunity to uplift um, our the three teachers that we celebrated earlier, but then also the, the folks that are coming to work every day. And we had the opportunity earlier in the week to talk to um, staff, from Southwest and in other schools. And we know and, and understand that this has been a, a lift for everyone. And so just thank you for the work that you continue to do. Thank you for our parents related to that. And then the last thing I wanna say is that it is Principal Appreciation Month, which is our principal leaders are doing lots of things behind the scenes. You've heard some of the comments around how principals are subbing in spaces and going on playground duty and then just doing lots and lots of things. So just to kind of uplift our principals and to say thank you too for their leadership because it's a lot of work for our, our leaders and we wanna acknowledge their work as well. Thank you. All right, thank you, Dr. Roby. We'll move on to board member comments. Dr. Flores, I'll start with you today. Gracias, uh, pero eh, quiero uh, agradecer primero que hayan venido y disfrutado y expresado sus opiniones aquí. Uh, lo agradecemos mucho y yo sé que va a haber algo de, de uh, progreso en esto. 
basically, I'm very happy that people are coming and expressing themselves in their native language and that there will be progress, uh, especially when concerns are brought uh, to, to the public. With, with all of the, 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 uh, the citizens that bring concerns, I think this board has been very, very responsive. And uh, I'm proud to be part of this group. And great leadership that we have, too, in solving problems. So I think uh, you guys are on the right track or across the board. And certainly it's wonderful to, to celebrate teachers. Uh, I think it's long overdue that we have a, a very robust uh, program for recognition of educators in the system. And I applaud this district again. So proud to be here. Thank you. Ms. Grant? Um, yes, I would like to echo that. I appreciate um, all of our parents for coming and being involved and engaged. And it's exactly um, what, what we need to hear uh, about what's going on in the district and know that even though we're not able to respond directly, we hear you. And um, you know, all of our educators and our staff in general are doing hard work, the, the drivers. We know that everyone who's involved with the day-to-day -day, um, for our students are doing hard work and things are not perfect. We acknowledge that, but uh, we do have a team that's working really hard and your engagement only helps to make that better. Um, the, the last thing I wanna say is uh, to the teachers who were, um, celebrated this evening, that was really wonderful. And for me, what stood out was the diversity of where they came from. Um, I think uh, as we hear from community and from families about, you know, wanting to, to see all of our kids experience um, great leadership and great talent in our teachers, it was wonderful to see the schools that those teachers came from because all of our kids really do um, deserve that, that level of leadership in their building. So that was awesome. And they're not here, but just a, a thank you to them for their hard work. All right, thank you. Ms. Lewis. Yes, I too would like to congratulate the teachers who were honored tonight. Uh, I know how hard they work, and I'm glad that they are receiving an honor for their hard work. I'd like to also extend my congratulations to the kids who did all this lovely artwork and um, let them know how much we appreciate them and their talents. Thank you. Dr. Baker. Yeah. I, uh... I do appreciate the increased community voice. I always talk about taking ownership of the schools instead of just being uh, consumers of schools and that, that happened today and really appreciate that. And I, and, and I do trust the uh, um, district's um, responsiveness as uh, Dr. Flores said. And I also wanna just thank um, the administration um, for, and then thus thank the student board members that you know the, the fact that being included more in student voice, choosing. I mean, it's not just that you all get to play this role, but it's also that you get to learn what good teaching looks like, what leadership looks like. You get to make decisions that uh, we will hold, that the community will hold you accountable for. Um, and I think that that's really a pretty, uh, I'm really happy that, that we're extending that and that, that, it, that goes to also the the fact of extending community voices, having your voice as a part of it. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Mr. Ross. Uh, I guess really not much to add. Um, you know, uh, my colleagues already mentioned um, the, some of the thanks and things that I have for the community voice as well. But I, I guess I would like a request uh, for update from the administration once you form your thoughts in regards to the uh, dean situation. Be definitely curious to hear um, what a uh, district perspective might be on that. All right, thank you. Reverend Matias. Sí, quería este, agradecer a los padres que vinieron, uh, aquellos que vinieron y hicieron este comentario público, pero también aquellos que no vinieron, los reconocimos y los vemos. I, I just said I really appreciate the parents that came up and publicly said something, but the others too that uh, did not, but were present, we see you. Um, it, it, it was exciting to hear uh, some of the ESSER a report and some of the athletics, I really hope that we continue to escalate uh, in that arena because we do have incredible uh, student athletes and, uh, and we need to get them uh, playing more and doing more. Um, as well as uh, lights out after school, um, just again, we need that, that uh, support 
and to see that we're also heading in, in terms of, uh, I, I really wanted to ask him about uh, how much IT has gone into um, having to uh, troubleshoot for a lot of the hotspots and a lot of things that were are happening. So um, I really appreciate that as, as well. But also uh, hearing what the city is partnering in terms of affordable uh, housing uh, is so critical to our district. And, and so it's nice that we have that, um, that partnership where we can cross pollinate and certainly inform each other. And then the public can actually hear that, um, that the city is working with its uh, citizens. So appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Ms. Williams. Just want to thank all the parents who have come out tonight and community members to share with us. I'd like to also thank all of the community members, parents, and students that have participated with the strategic planning. Um, uh, we appreciate you, and we ask that you continue to come out and encourage others as well. Yeah, I'll just echo that. I had the opportunity to attend our virtual strategic planning input session and put on my parent hat and say uh, how I felt as a parent of a high schooler and an elementary student as well. So um, like you, I am in this district as a mom, and I just want to say thank you for coming out and advocating for um, your kids and your building and your teachers and your leadership. It matters, and we're just really grateful uh, for your involvement in the decision making in this district. And in encourage you to come out to our additional sessions if you've not yet had the chance to join one of our strategic planning input sessions. If you'd like to find those dates and locations, they're right on the homepage. When you go to grps.org, a window pops up with those dates so you can find them very easily. And with that, we'll adjourn the meeting. Thank you, everyone.